Okay. ASMR for this week. Um, as you can see, I am back in my normal position by the pool, um, as this seems to be the quietest place in the hotel at the moment. Um, everywhere else, they, they tend to, in this place, in the morning is maintenance, and they do all the cleaning and maintenance in the morning. So um, I'm trying to record this. Normally, by the time I try to record this, everybody has disappeared from around the pool area because they're all in other areas, like areas of the hotel doing maintenance and cleaning activities. But uh, the last few days, because of all the work that's been going on around the pool here, um, they're still, uh, ho the man's still hoovering the pool at the moment, and there's another guy wandering around banging things. I'm not quite sure what he's doing, but he's banging things and filing things and doing stuff like that. Anyway, this video is entitled, How to Store My Equipment. And the reason for that is I've been monitoring a number of user groups recently, and there's been a number of questions come up on the user groups about storage of equipment. Um, specifically, how would you recommend storing equipment? Um, and I thought, well, maybe this is worth me worthwhile me giving you my take on how I store equipment, um, or how I would, you know, before I put stuff, take stuff out of the studio and send it to the storage, or before I take stuff out of the studio and send it to and sell it. This is kind of the things I go through. Um, and I think the approach will depend on, on your circumstances and what you have available. But here are some pointers, okay? My view. First up, how long are you intending to store this thing? Um, and the reason why I ask that is because how long you intend to store it might change the way you, you approach the storage. Now, if you're only going to put something in storage for a couple of months and you've had it in regular use, um, you might literally just you know, clean it, give it a clean, and stick it in a box and do something and put it in storage. Um, but if you're going to take longer than a, if you're going to intend to store it for longer than a few months, then what I probably would advise here is to do a little bit of preventive maintenance on your equipment before you send it off to storage. Um, and this this probably is sort of going to take you a little bit longer before you can put it into storage, but it will prove dividends going forward. Um, so if if it's going to be longer than six months, say. Um, what I would say is, first thing is, before you put in storage, change battery, okay? So I maintain a spreadsheet, effectively, where I have all my equipment uh, and I have when the batteries were changed, okay? So if I intend to put something in storage for a couple of years and the battery was changed five years ago, then I probably would go and change the battery again now before I put it in storage. Um, Alternative, rather than changing the battery, you ju might just want to remove the battery. Okay, so um, take the battery out of the machine completely, that way you completely uh, mitigate the risk of the battery leaking onto the circuit board while it's in storage. Because that's typically what will happen with an older battery. They will leak, they will get to the end of service life and they will leak, and then you end up with nice battery acid and residue on your circuit board, which is never the easiest thing to clean up and probably will still sit there for a number of years before you get around to clearing up because you don't even know it's happened. Um, so, so that's the kind of thing I would do first up, is just make sure either the battery was out or um, a ba battery's been upgraded. Now I have a personal preference, when I put stuff into storage, I always want to make sure it works before it goes into storage because that way I've got a modicum of chance it working when it comes out of storage, if you follow my logic. And if something has gone wrong in storage, then I know that there's probably some sort of internal issue going on that is not related to storage. So that's the first thing. The second thing to consider when you put things in storage is where are you going to store it? Um, ideally, what you're looking for is a location that is clean, that is dry, that is heated, it's not prone to damp, you know, you're looking for that sort of style of environment because that's the best way, the, the best way you're going to protect the keyboard from deteriorating while in storage. Um, now, environmental factors are quite uh, important. Uh, the best place for long-term storage is probably somewhere that maintains an ambient temperature of around about 10 degrees, okay, plus or minus, but around about 10 degrees. It doesn't freeze, it's not damp, it's not warm, but it has an ambient temperature of about 10 degrees. That's probably the best place to store um, 
your, your keyboards or your equipment. Okay? Um, anywhere that sort of has a wild fluctuation in temperature is going to be a problem because that means the equipment will get hot, then the equipment will cool down, has lovely condensation, condensation means water, water leads to damp, you sort of get the drift. So anywhere that is, is pretty sort of constant ambient temperature is a good place for storage. Um, now, storage facilities, and they, they're all over the place, these storage facilities, um, where they are either purpose-built warehouses or converted warehouses, they are going to pretty much hit the nail on the head in terms of um, good places for storage. They have a, a relatively low ambient temperature. They are heated, um, although you wouldn't know it walking through some of them, I have to be honest, but they are generally heated to a very low temperature, so they, they're kept above freezing, and typically they will be sort of around about sort of a nine or 10 degrees um, when you go in there. So that's pretty cool. So they, and they tend to be clean. They tend to have uh, on-site pest control, so rodents and that sort of stuff. Although as long as you've got no food or um, any, any, anything like that in, in the location while you're storing it, rodents shouldn't be an issue because rodents will tend to be drawn towards um, things they can eat and things they can sleep in, that sort of thing. So as long as you've got none of that in there, you shouldn't have a rodent problem, but they have standard pest control on site as well. Um, they're clean. You know, they tend to be fairly clean environments. Um, uh, they don't suffer from damp. Um, ideally, don't go for something that's on the on the ground floor when you're when you're when you're buying or renting a unit. Go for something on an upper floor because that will obviously ensure that if there's if there's ingress from below, you're not going to get ingress from below because you're already a floor above. Also, sorts of, sort, sorts out things like flooding for argument's sake as well. It's always a good idea to go for. I always go for the first floor if I'm renting one of those units, and I haven't done for a long time. So, um, so they're a good, a very good place to store stuff. Um, storage facilities that use external garages or things like uh, shipping containers are not so good um, because a they're not heated. Um, so there's no con no ambient temperature control in there. Um, B, they will suffer wildly from temperature fluctuations, especially if they're out in the open and the sun beats down on them, they get very hot. And in the winter, they get very cold because obviously the container or the garage will, will effectively freeze. Now, they might not freeze inside, but the there is a wild fluctuation in temperature. So they're not so good. They're still relatively good places to store, but they're not great for storing ele electrical equipment for a long period of time. Home spaces, like lofts, basements and garages, um, kind of need to be taken on, on their merit. Each one needs to be taken on their merit. I'm going to make some generalised comments here, okay? Loft spaces, um, unless property converted, tend to be hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Okay, so, you know, you're going to have one, big temperature fluctuations with loft spaces, um, just purely because you tend to insulate the underneath the area where the boarding goes in the loft so that underneath the boarding is all the insulation that retains the heat for the house and the loft itself normally has some sort of airflow in it to maintain that it doesn't get damp um, and uh, rock the timbers and stuff like that so bear in mind it, it tends to be dry loft spaces tend to be dry um, but they tend to have wild temperature fluctuations and they tend to be quite dusty as well um, purely because the airflow going over, you always end up with a lot of dust in the loft unless it's been properly converted. Um, again, garages have issues with temperature fluctuations. Um, you know, especially if a, a garage is, is outside of the house, then you know, unless you and again, unless you've got it heated, it's going to be going up and down with the with the seasons. Um, garages tend to be quite damp because. Um, especially an older garage, because they didn't put any damp courses into the garage when the garage was built. Um, garages tend to be an afterthought rather than the house, and the house would have a nice damp course, but the garage will not have a damp course. So they tend to be quite damp places as well. Um, so, again, you know, not a great place to store stuff. Now, basements are interesting. Basements tend to have a re relatively e uh, constant ambient temperature. Um, because of the earth around them, okay, and the house above. So the house is insulated above, 
the earth around them forms a, a, a particular insulation. Now, if a basement hasn't probably been tanked and, and dealt with, when I say tanked, I mean, you know, unless the, the damp and the moisture hasn't been correctly uh, dealt with, um, they can be damp. But if, they have, if it has been properly tanked uh, and uh, the walls all been properly uh, insulated and rendered, basements are a cracking place to store equipment because they are, as I said, the temperature is fairly ambient across the year. So, think about where you're going to store this, look at what, what equipment you're going to store, how you're going to store it, and then choose a suitable location. Third up, how you're going to store the equipment, so this is the next one. And when I say how you're going to store the equipment, what I mean is, what are you going to put the equipment in to put it in storage? Now. If you have a case, and not a lot of people, quite a lot of people don't have cases, they've bought the equipment, they never thought they are going to move it from wherever it was, they've never bought a case for the equipment. So in that scenario, they haven't got a case. But if you do have a case for your equipment, then that's going to be the best place to put the equipment in before you ship it off to storage. One of the things about a case though, is make sure you bring the case into wherever the equipment is and leave it for a couple of days to get acclimatised to the ambient temperature around it. If you put a warm keyboard in a cold place <coughs> and then shove it off down to storage or whatever you're going to do with it, you could, in, in, you could um, instigate condensation in the equipment which is something you don't want. Now, most times it's probably not going to be applicable, but if you definitely if you're going from a, a very warm environment to a, a cool environment, that can definitely definitely happen. Um, so, what I would say is put your equipment in the case, allow it to climatize, and then you can buy silica gel um, stuff, which are these packets of, of moisture absorber, water absorbing um, gel items, crystals, uh, and buy, you can buy those for about 10 sashes for five dollars um, or five pounds. Sling a couple of those in the case before you shut it. That will mean that if there is any moisture in the case these things will absorb it for you and stop it getting onto the electronics etc. That's the whole idea of what these things are designed to do. So it's well worth the five dollar or five quid, five, five pounds investment to do that. If the if the item is a 19 inch rack um, then again I think you need to sort of work out how you're going to store this thing. If you have a 19 inch rack that you can put into storage, great, because what I would do is I would take the 19 inch rack, which is personally what I've done, I have actually bought a very cheap 19 inch rack, uh, just a plastic 19 inch rack storage for storage and I've put my the 19 inch rack modules that are not in the, in the um, uh, studio at the moment into that 19 inch rack unit down in the storage unit okay where I've got it stored that works really well it wasn't expensive but for me it works out well and all I've done is the 19 inch rack I've bought has a front and back cover that lock onto it so it stops with the dust ingressing and also in the bottom of the rack I've put two sachets of silica gel as I've just said very good keeps the equipment very um, keeps the equipment clean from dust first thing it stops anything getting in there to attack the equipment tap the wires brilliant keeps it um, free of damp even better so that's kind of how I've done that now if you don't have either of those options available to you and by the way if you do put stuff into storage what you should do is about once a year um, if you can go to the storage where you've got the stuff in storage, open up the equipment and just feel the silica gel. If the silica gel feels damp, then replace it. Okay, put new silica gel in there, um, or you can do what friends of mine do, which is take the silica gel out, take it home, stick it in the oven for a couple of hours on a very low heat just to, clean, just to dry it out, and then they go back and stick it back in the case. Either way works, okay? But, you know, do make sure that you do sort of, uh, while it's in storage, just keep a regular check on it. Um, so, if I don't have a case and I don't have a rack, what do I do then? Well, 
If you have the original box and the original packing, great, use that. Um, I'm not a great fan of putting boxes into storage because, again, if you have any dampness there, the box tends to just disintegrate. And you end up trying to sort of, as you try to move it out of storage, you end up with a box that falls to pieces and, and the equipment and all the packaging just splurges everywhere. Um, not particularly great. But if you have a box and the original packing, use that. If you don't have the packing that originally went around the, the item itself, um, which is like a, um, I suppose it's like a membrane type material they use now. Um, it's like a cloth, it's not a, not a plastic, it's like a cloth. If you don't have that, which is ideally for, designed for two functions effectively, number one, it's designed to keep the dust off um, the equipment, and number two, it's designed just to sort of give it a bit of protection against knocks and bangs. Um, you know, where something is held, put up against something, it's the, it's the, the cloth that takes the, the abrasion, not the unit. Um, but if you don't have that, nice cotton sheet, wrap the equipment in a nice cotton sheet, we'll do the same thing. And then just put a piece of packing tape across the cotton sheet just to keep it um, secured. You don't have to wrap it, you just need to just keep the cotton sheet secured. Um, that will do the same thing. Um, if you don't have the original packing, i.e. the polystyrene or, pay or, or cardboard packing they use nowadays, sort of these egg box, egg box type packing um, scenarios, then what I would do is I would go and buy some, and I have to look this up, hang on a sec, what do they call it? It's da 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 da. Uh, uh, bear with me, it's called Pelican Foam. Um, and Pelican foam is effectively is that foam that has a flat back and then has a indented side. And what you do is you put the flat back against the bo bottom of the box, around the sides of the box, at the end of the box, and on top of the, the item, and you put the item in. Effectively, you're cocooning it inside the, the foam. That just stops the equipment being knocked about inside the box when you're moving the box around. Um, so that effectively is how I would do that. Now, if you don't have a box, the other thing that you might consider doing <coughs> is putting it in a plastic bag. So wrap it in foam, use some gaffer tape or parcel tape or whatever you want to do just to wrap the foam around it so it's protecting the keyboard. And then put the keyboard in something like a bivy bag. Now you turn around and say, what is a bivy bag? So these are, these are survival bags and they, they sell them fairly cheaply online. You can get them on Amazon. Um, and what these things are designed to do is when you're out and you get caught short and the weather turns in, you can effectively open this bag up, it's waterproof, it's um, got some thermal properties to it, and you can climb into this thing and it, it will effectively keep you alive. But what they are really good for is they're waterproof. They're designed to be waterproof in horrible environments. So if you buy a bivy bag, and typically a bivy bag will be bigger, bigger than your item of equipment, um, you can buy a bivy bag, you can wrap your equipment, you can wrap the foam around it, you can put it into a bivy bag, you can get some parcel tape and just seal the bivy bag up. Job done, the whole thing will now be pretty much protected from water um, and knocks and bangs. And again, throw in a couple of sachets of silica gel before you seal it up, just to make sure that if there is any moisture in there that silica gel takes it out. So, I think that's <laughs> a very quick rundown of how I would put equipment into storage. Um, obviously there are other ways of doing it, but from my perspective, what you're trying to do when you put a piece of equipment in the storage is you're trying to protect it. You're trying to ensure that it still works when you bring it out of storage. Um, and you know, if you're going to sell it on, you want to make sure that it's in the best condition to be sold on. So you know, keeping it, making sure it doesn't get damaged in storage, make sure it doesn't get water damaged, make sure it's all this sort of stuff. That's what you're trying to do when you put equipment into storage. So that when you come out, comes out, you take it out, you bring it back to wherever you want to do, uh, you're going to use it. Again, remember to let the equipment acclimatize to so take the keyboard or take the equipment out of the storage container and then just leave it on the side for a few hours so it can acclimatize. Because if you go from a very cold environment to a very warm environment, so if you're living in, 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 a, in a very hot area and you bring stuff out of storage, the first thing that's gonna happen as soon as you bring that out of storage and you put it on in somewhere hot, it's gonna con get, you're gonna get condensation on it. And what you need to make sure is that condensation is not on the circuit board because as soon as you put power across it, guess what, it's gonna go pop. So, I hope that's been of some help to some of you. If not, I hope. 
Remember, hit that like button if you like what you saw. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified about more rants, more mailbag, more questions and answers, and more videos about this sort of stuff when it's loaded to the channel. Until next time, bye-bye.